Hey everyone, I'm Will. And I'm Eric. And today we're going to be discussing crosswords from Indie Boards and Cards. The game plays three to six players in about 30 minutes. So let's give you a quick rundown of how the game works and we'll be right back with our review. <laughs> All right, so in crosswords, you're going to have this nine grid right in the center of the table. And you're going to start with this deck here that says starts with I'm going to drop the top card of the deck and you're going to place it in the top corner. It says starts with S. So then you're going to match the corresponding circles to the corresponding spaces on the grid. So this is going to be green, red, blue. So you're going to take the top green card here as websites, food and drink, and smaller than a microwave. It's going to also ask for a red and then a blue. So you're going to take a red card, toys, and at the picnic. So once all those reveal, players are going to take their nine corresponding um, identifier tokens and they're going to go around at the same time, essentially just write things on here. So for example, um, you know, food and drink, that starts with an S. So they're going to write something down, let's say soda, <clears throat> and place it there. And then they're just going to keep going. So toy, toy websites. So you might think lego.com. So websites at the picnic might be a harder one to come up with, but then you may think of a, uh, a company that, that makes those kind of things. I think one is Coleman. So Coleman.com. Write it down. And then toys, food and drink, smaller than a microwave toys. So again, you can come up with the same thing that I say Legos. So you mark it there. While the other players are going to be doing the same thing and they're going to be writing their same so like toy websites, let's say they did lego.com as well. And then on smaller than a microwave for toys, they put GI Joe. So once everyone has, has spent all their tokens and got their tokens and thing, you're then gonna go around and you're gonna uh, pull them out and see who scored points. So for example, anybody else who picks soda is gonna get a point or not get a point, anybody else has identified. So for example, like toys here, lego.com lego.com neither of these players score points but on smaller than a microwave and toys lego and gi joe are two different ones so they'll each score one point you're just going to keep going through until one player has seven points so that was crosswords from indie boards and cards Whew, i don't know i think it'd be great when the right the right people who are into word games and don't mind giving each other crap that's what this game's mostly about i think it's really confronting each other about their decisions and then making them proving your point, I guess. There were a lot of different cards and a lot of things that when you, when you smash them together, it was really hard to figure out things that actually fit in that category. We played a couple different games, mm -hmm. right? And we, we had it where like, you know, everybody was going to play all their, all their tokens down. And, and once you were done, once everybody was done, we compared and, it was kind of anticlimactic. I mean, it never really felt like we were like, oh, there's a lot of common themes here or anything. You know, everybody right. had their own option or their own words. We then played another way. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we played it where once the, the tableau or the, the nine grid was completely filled up, that's when the game stopped. So nobody had any other options. And that was a lot more fun. I like the pressure. Yeah. It, it was more than a timer. It was like, okay, somebody going to try to quickly get these filled. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that a lot. I also thought our categories were a lot better the second game, which I think helped. We had e easier things than the, the second categories sure. than we did in the first game. Well, it, you know, and that's not even in the rule book. It was something that we just thought of like, hey, let's kind of give it a little timer. Is that right? Or was that little option in the rule book as a, I, as a solution? It, I don't think it was in the rule book at all. Um, okay. It doesn't come with a timer with the game at all either. Right. So like we were using our phone the first time just to kind of set a limit, but we weren't really being like a hard limit. But. but I mean, this game isn't really designed in my opinion to be a gamer's game. It's more of like a casual party game that people are just going to get together like boggle or scrabble, things mm -hmm. like that. And if you think of it like that, this game was, was fun. Um, it was a game that anybody can play. Um, I think the more <sighs> thought provocative, I guess you are, you know, way you can come up with the words just on the fly and mm -hmm. different, different th categories. I guess the more intelligent you are, I was horrible at this game. 
Um, the more intelligent you are, and you were able to to knock out of the park. We played with another player, and, and man, he he had words for every single category. It was pretty awesome. So um, when we implemented the the options with like the 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 countdown, if you if you will, with the the limited number of stuff uh, spaces that we had once those were filled, I think the game became more of a gamer's game. I yeah, I agree. Right. So I what you know what's the price point in this game? I think you pick it up for about twenty bucks. I think if you're looking for a fun party game, I think this game would be a great option. Uh, if you're looking to play with family members, especially older family members who, you know, can can think of so many different categories and words that you didn't even think of in the first place. But I don't know about older family members, more of like people who are into word games, you know, who play Scrabble sure. and play different games like that. I think this is going to be a game for them. You're more intellectuals. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was fun. I... <sighs> I don't know if I would recommend it for my library. It was fun. It just wasn't for me. For you? Um, I can see playing it with some other couple friends we have that aren't big board gamers. But, I mean, I wouldn't bring it to, like, a, a board game session with friends that are gamers, too. But No. No. No, I mean, just because just it's not it's, for us doesn't mean it's not for you. It's, so. it's just a casual. It's a casual gaming. Yep. Yep. A absolutely. Gaming. But I think it would be good in the right situation. Component quality? Uh, on I this it was game, good. On this game, it was, it was good, though. It was hard. Mm. It was... Uh, the, the plastic felt thick, and the, I don't the really The tokens feel like, were good. Yeah, the tokens were good on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. No real issues with quality at all. Plastic do, tray was good. I do wish the marker had an eraser. That was my only complaint. There was no eraser with the game. So you do have to have either some paper towel, or just if you don't mind marking with your finger. Yeah. Right, just swipe up, but then you get colored fingers. But, you know, not that big of a deal at the yeah. end of the day. Um, cards were good. There was a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. A lot of cards in the box, which is a good thing. So it uh, gives you a lot of variation. And every time you set it up that starts with letter, it also tells you how many of each card to put in each slot. So all in all, it, it was fun. Like I said, it just wasn't for me. Um, I'm going to give this one hmm, 13 out of 20. Oh, I'd say it's a good score. I'm going to agree with you on that. Yeah, It'll work so, in certain situations and groups. It's just not a game you're going to be playing every day. So, All right, everybody. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take us out? Thanks for checking out our video. You can check out all the rest of our content on maturemindedgamers.com. Have yourself a good night.